What's up guys, Harsh here, back in the video. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to make this awesome portable soil moisture sensor over here. And it is just a pretty basic stuff going on over here. You have all your wires jumbled up and I don't need to streamline it a lot, but uh, it is what it is. So I'll be showing you each step by step on how to make this. And if you want a shorter version of this video, it is also uploaded on channel. So you can check that out just to make sure you have the connections right and all the components you really need but uh, that i will be showing in this video as well so without wasting any time let's get started okay so first of all we need something to measure the soil moisture so we will be using this this is a simple soil moisture sensor you can get this on any robotics website or stuff that sells arduino and stuff like that and i bought this on amazon so this is also available there and as you can see that it usually comes in two pieces so this section over that actually goes into the soil is the first part and the second part is that this thing right here this ic over here that converts it into a cell or analog signal to be output through it so I have actually soldered them together as you can see so this way it is a in looking design and uh, the polarity of this doesn't matter you can just uh, place it just like this or flip it upside down and just place it so the connection between these two the polarity of it doesn't matter so you can just put them in any way you like next up is our arduino nano this will allow us to take the digital signal from this sensor over here convert it into the signals of it to display to the LCD or the OLED screen that we are going to use so as you can see it has so many pins on both the side but we will be only using a few pins so main will be the power inputs power outputs and the signal input outputs which is basically all of them but we are not doing all of them and it is mounted on a breadboard so that way the connections are a bit easier to do and it is a pretty tiny breadboard you can also get this for fairly affordable price and not use a giant breadboard but you can use a giant breadboard if you are just testing it out and seeing if the components are working or not just uh, beta testing you know but uh, i am going to make this a little bit consumer ready type so that's why i'm using the small breadboard over here next up is our tiny little oled display so this is a 0.95 inch OLED display so the 0.5 in 95 inches measure from this end to this end so it is diagonal and as you can see it has only four pins which is two for the power and two for the data so that way it will receive data and print the stuff over here and there are a lot of versions in which you can get it so we have the 0.95 version you can also get the two inch version or the 1.95 inch version there are a lot of there and uh, the resolution of this particular oled display is displayed right over here because i don't know so whoever is editing this video should put it up right here next up is our battery so this is our uh, battery packs and it houses two 18650 batteries that, that are connected in series so this will provide a total voltage of 7.4 volts which should be enough to power up the Arduino Nano, the OLED display and the soil moisture itself so pretty nice battery pack you can just uh, cover it up just like so it so that the batteries don't poke out and there's a nice switch over here for it to just turn on and off the system so that's pretty night nice so these are all the components and apart from this you will need some connecting wires so these are some jumper wires so now all our components are here now let's start building let's start by connecting the arduino to the soil moisture sensor so in the soil moisture sensor you can see the first pin is the vcc then the ground and then there are two pins named do and ao so do stands for digital output and ao stands for analog output so i am going to use the analog output pin for this particular project and the vcc is for the positive power supply and the ground is for ground you know the black wire that usually goes so I'm going to take the VCC from this the leftmost pin and connect it to any of the 5 volt supply that I have on this board. So 
one is right over here as you can see it has written over here 5v so that is 5 volts so i'll connect it over here i'll connect the second pin which is the ground to the ground so it's the green wire and it connects to the ground of the arduino so this is right over here as you can see and then i will connect the analog output pin which is the rightmost pin over here to pin number a0 or a1 or whatever you like because there are not number of pins related to here but uh, the way i have programmed this particular board is to work with a1 so i'll be connecting it to the a1 which is the uh, this pin over here and that's it for the connection with the soil motion sensor and the arduino now let's move on to the connection with the oled display over here so on the top you can see that there are four pins total and they are ground vcc scl and sda so just like before the ground and the vcc can go to the ground and the 5 volts output of the arduino so the ground you can connect it to the ground of the arduino for the ground it doesn't really matter where you connect so i just connect it anywhere i want so let's just put it over here that way we have not a clutter of wires over the, on this side and then the vcc can go to the 5 volts over here which we connected earlier with the yellow wire let's connect the data pins so we take the scl pin and connect it to the analog 5 of the arduino so analog 5 is right over here i think yes it is right over here as you can see so i will connect it right over there And for the SDA pin, pin will go to the analog pin 4 of the Arduino. So it is named as A4 over here. So right next to the A5, I will connect it. And that's pretty much it for the connection between the everything. So right now we just need the power. So at this point you can power it through the USB port, which is as you can see, it is a type B port over here so that way you will be able to power everything over here but uh, we are going to use some external power supply because we need to take it out on the field and test it out so that's where our battery pack comes in and as you can see at the very far right corner over here there are two pins that are vin and gnd so vin stands for voltage input and gnd obviously is for ground so voltage input we can provide it from this pin so let's just connect it and these are just standard wires that i'm going to connect in the pin slots over here so voltage in the positive supply of the power will go there and then the ground which is the ground over here as well will be connected to the ground pin and uh, i think it's a bit tricky for you to see but i will have the link of the circuit diagram in the description so you can check that out and it's a pretty simple circuit diagram not very complex so that will be able to able to make this project very easily and don't we have this shambles over here i will just stick it onto the battery case i think right now all our connections are done now we can go ahead and plug the usb port in and it should be supplied with the arduino but uh, if you don't have it just search a uh, type b usb cable and you will get it so that way you will be able to plug it into the computer and program it so let's go ahead and do that okay before we do anything first of all we need to run this code over here and this code actually allows us to find out the address of the OLED display so every display has a unique address for it and in some cases it might be different for example it is either zero x3c 0x27 or whatever so all you have to do is just use this code i have given it in the description you can check it out from there along with the circuit diagram and all you have to do is just plug in your arduino uno then go to tools and it sometimes automatically select the com port which is com5 but uh, in your case it might not so you have to manually select the com port so in this case it is com5 then you have to select the board which you can select it by here so our is arduino nano which is right over here we can select that it is already selected and 
the processor at mega 3a 328p with old bootloader so we have a different options over here and you need to check what version of arduino uno you have or nano version you have so mine works with 328p with old bootloader so i will select that and once everything is sorted out we can just simply upload the code to the board and once the code is uploaded we have to again go to tools and open up the serial monitor this will show us the address of our OLED display so found address it is 0x3c so remember this address as we will be putting this in our main code so let me open that here is our main code and as you can see we have to put the address in this line over here and I have already mentioned it in the comment line as well so here you can see I have written 0x3c and change it according to your address that you need now let's take a look at the code itself so we have a analog read so this will read the data of the analog pin from a1 then we have mapped the value to show it in a percentage form and we have then set the text size to you can set it to 3 1 or whatever just make sure it fits your screen and we have also added the gfx library to work with the OLED display so that we can use these commands over here so to add the library all you have to do is just go to sketch include library and then manage libraries this will open up this window over here and all you have to do is just type in the library name and just type in gfx so you will get your library name adapt to gfx library and as you can see it is already installed in my system and if it not if it is not installed in your system it will show just like this so you have the install button right over here and we have to do the same process again just go to tools select our board our processor and our com port after that we can just simply go ahead and click on upload and it will upload the code to the Arduino and you have done everything correctly at this point it should start working okay now it is uploaded we can go outside and test it out okay so i'm outside to ready to test this thing so as you can see i am getting a one percent right now but uh, that's just the way the code works so don't worry about that so all of you just insert it into the soil and it's a pretty tough so so i have to press it in a bit further and once i zoom in you can see the moisture which is at 73 74 percentage and that is pretty much it and that is all you have to do so once you are done with your reading you can just take it out and then clean these tips a bit because they get a little bit of corrosion going on if you do not clean them so make sure to clean them always so that's it for today's video guys thanks for watching and please if you find this video helpful like subscribe and share thank you and i will see you all later